Hi everyone, it's Heather. Welcome to my channel. I have decided halfway through the month that I'm going to torture myself. It's September 13th, there are 18 days left in the month and I have so many books left to read. I think I have 16. So I am going to be vlogging, reading 16 books in 18 days. Editing Heather here. My numbers in this video are all over the place, so just disregard what my numbers are. I never know what I'm talking about. The general idea is to read 17 books in 18 days. Who knows how to count? Um, I just wanted to give a heads up that the numbers will be varying between clips because I don't know how to, how to do math. Think that's right. I will go over what I'm gonna be reading. A lot of it is pulled from Book Wild's TBR Shoes and Ladders game and Becca's Bookopolathon. So I have 10, I believe 10 books from that. And then I also have a bunch of books from the library that are gonna go back and I need to finish them. And then I also have books for a series that Chantelle and I are gonna be working on. So there's a lot. Of books that I have to read and I thought this might hold me accountable to finishing them. I'm gonna quickly go over what I'm reading over the next 18 days and we will go on this journey together. So for our TBR Shoots and Ladders game, I have to read The Poppy War by R.F. Kuang. The Corrections by Jonathan Franzen. Mwah! The Calling of Morgan Crow. And, and I have to finish Red Seas Under Red Skies. For the additional books that I have to read for Book Oplathon are Mexican Gothic, the third volume of Saga. Where the Crawdads Sing, Papillion, and I was going to read, from my Becca Rec, I was going to read Mistborn, but I'm already in The Way of Kings, and um, Becca's also reading this book this month, and so she didn't technically recommend it, but it's a read-along with her, so I was like, that works. So I'm, I'm going to be reading The Way of Kings instead, which is a chunker of a book, uh, but I've been listening to the audiobook, so I'm I've, I'm farther than this shows. My Dark Vanessa is another book that I will be reading for Bookopolathon, and I think that's it. For my library books that I need to read, because I can't renew them anymore. I've renewed them too many times, and people are waiting for them. Lock Every Door by Riley Sager. Girl, Woman, Other by Bernadine Evaristo, Dominica Dominicana by Angie Cruz, Weather by Jenny Ophel, Nimona by Noelle Stevenson, Cantoras by Carolina de Robertus, and I want to participate in the last final Buzz Wordathon that Books and Lala is hosting, so I also have The Night Circus by Erin Morgenstern from the library as well. So that's 17 books. I also have two, I'm not gonna go get them because I'm lazy. I have um, the fifth and sixth volumes of Saga from the library. So I would also have to read the fourth, which I own before getting to those. So if I added those on, it would be an additional two, which would be 19, 19 books in 18 days. So that's, where I'm at, what I'm starting with. I'm probably just gonna do a short check-in every day to try to keep this from being super long. I am almost done with Where, to, where the Crawdads Sing. So far I'm loving it. It is such a well-written story. I really, really am highly enjoying it. Wish you girl luck. Now I'm stressing myself out. It'll be good, it'll be worth it. It'll be fun, it'll be fun. Hey everyone, it is now Wednesday, September 16th, so it's been three days, I believe, since the start of my 17 books, 
17 books in 18 days. So far I have finished two books. I have finished two books that I'll talk about in a second and I am like weird amounts of pages into a bunch of the other books. I've been kind of all over the place. I haven't been feeling very motivated to sit and read one specific book and I've just been like testing from lots of lots of them. So the first book that I finished was Where the Crawdads Sing by Delia Owens. I was reading this for the Bookopolathon, um, my five-star prediction, and I feel like this is a running theme. I loved it until I didn't love it. This is a story about a girl who is grows up in a marsh in North Carolina on the, like, the outer banks of North Carolina and her timeline growing up as well as a murder mystery that happens when she is grown up and we're figuring out the murder mystery as we are getting a picture into her life and I loved learning about her life the marsh Delia Owens is a nature nature scientist so she like does nature science things and you could like that part was so beautiful but the dialogue was so cheesy and the murder mystery itself and the way that that all wraps up was cheesy and unbelievable kind of and like I get it I just didn't love it so right after reading it I had given it four stars and then after thinking about it I finished it the first day of my I'm just gonna call it a readathon because I don't it's my own readathon that no one else is doing or is making me do or is in any way a readathon. It's just what I'm gonna call it. I finished this the first day of the readathon and I gave it four stars initially and then I've been thinking about it since and I think I'm gonna lower my rating to a three star. All of the beauty of the book was kind of outweighed by the cheesiness and unbelievability for me I think at the end. I'm just surprised that it's like this amazing like so many people love this book i don't think i've ever heard anyone not love this book until i went and i read the goodread goodreads reviews and there are were people who had like similar opinions to me but i was very surprised that i wasn't in love with this book but that's the first one i finished the second one i finished last night was lock every door by riley sager this was not for any prompt um for my shoots and letters tbr or a couple of fun i just wanted to read it and i got it from the library and i rated this two stars i again have not heard very many people saying not good things about this i've only heard good things i thought it was slow at first like nothing is really happening until halfway through the through the book I didn't predict the actual ending but it was not like again not super believable and I think I have a hard time with books that are set in the real world and are supposed to be like real but aren't believable like they have some you know and I mean there are like situations like this book that could be believable but in this specific instance I didn't find it to be believable and I thought the main character was made stupid choices I thought she should have known better like the choices that she made didn't reflect her personality this is a story where a girl is an apartment sitter for a ton of money there's all these weird rules people are disappearing um apartment sitters in particular are disappearing and she has had a lot of family tragedy in her life and she is like determined to figure out what's going on which is great like that's believable sure whatever but they feel like they're being watched I'm not going to say why. If anyone wants to talk to me about why I found this unbelievable and why I had problems with the main character's choices, please leave a comment and we can totally have a conversation about it because I think a lot of people wouldn't, wouldn't think that. Obviously, because so many people love it, but I gave it two stars. I did not like it. I did not think it was original. Not for me, which is such a bummer. 
I feel like I'm just having this happen over and over and over. I really think I'm going to love something. And then it's just like, it's not, it doesn't do it. And then I'm in the middle of a ton of books. The corrections, I am on page 82. This is kind of just like a family drama about a typical American family. Their dad, the father, husband, um, has Parkinson's and they are all having their little family dramas. I don't like reading about real life generally. I don't know why I chose this book. Um, but I am liking the writing style. I'm not like loving it, but I am like, like I'm not gonna DNF it. This was for the shoots and ladders game of eyes, the prompt of eyes closed. So it was the first book that I touched. And then I am also, I'm on page 70 of Cantoris. I have read a little bit more of The Way of Kings. I'm now on 323. I thought I was a lot farther than I was, but I'm not. And then the last book that I have started is Mexican Gothic by Sylvia Moreno Garcia. And I am 47 pages in. I've been listening to the audiobook. This is for the ebook or audiobook prompt for Becca's Book Applethon. And, but I bought the book too. I don't know why I did that. I was at a used bookstore and I saw that they had it. And I was excited because it was new. I don't know why. And I'm bummed that I did because 47 pages in, I. I'm not liking it. It's about a woman who gets a letter from her cousin who is married and says she has tuberculosis and thinks she's being poisoned. And the Noemi, who is the girl who has received the letter, her father is like, go help your cousin. So she is, she's at the house where her cousin is and there's some weird vibes from the family that she has married into. They're English and seem to have a fascination with eugenics and skin color and all of that. I don't want to give too much away, but I think there will be a lot of similarities between this and Lock Every Door. Everyone loves it. So I'm gonna, I mean, I'm gonna finish it. It's not that long of a book. I do need to finish Cantoris, um, because it was due back at the library yesterday. And also, the library has done away with, what's it called? Late fees. How is, how are they affording that? I'm very intrigued. And I wonder if people are gonna like take advantage of that and just return books late, like I am. I'm not taking advantage, like that's not why, but um, that's interesting. Anyways, so I need to read this. Dominicana? is also due back at the library, was due back at the library yesterday, but I have this on audiobook. It is not available to me on script though until the end of the month. Um, same with the Poppy War. Hmm. So maybe I'll do this, finish Mexican Gothic, and do this. Because I also have books that fit prompts and books that don't, but the books that don't, I still really want to read. We'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. I don't think I said at the beginning of this when I was introducing how many pages I needed to read total, but for all of these 17 books, it's 6,361 pages in 18 days, which is 353 pages a day, roughly. And as of now, it's like 4.30 p.m., I have read... 702 pages over the past like two and a half days so i'm a little behind already which isn't great but we are doing our best hi everybody so it is friday the 18th and i am walking to the library to return all of my library books and have a whole bag. Um, I thought it was going to be really cold. It's actually really nice out. And then I'm picking up a bunch of books that I shouldn't be picking up because I have so many books to read, but I'm doing it anyways. So. Okay. 
So this is a very strange angle, but we're working with what we have because it is so not nice outside and I don't want to miss out on it. So I just went to the library and again, I shouldn't be picking more books up because I have to read however many in however many days but I'm preparing for next month. First, I should, guess I should say what I finished. I will put however many pages I have finished here. And um, so far, the only book that I've managed to finish since the ones that we've talked about is Cantoras by Carolina de Robertis. And I loved this book. I just returned it, otherwise I would show you, but you guys have seen it. Um, so it is the story of five women who are who live in Uru Uruguay during the 1970s during a dictatorship and they are not allowed to be open about their sexuality and so they find this little stretch of beach that's super secluded in the small town and they they make it their own little place and it's where they can be fully themselves with each other they don't have to worry about hiding their sexuality and then we kind of follow them as they go back to the city that they live in and they return to this little small town beach over the next like 60 years and their relationships with each other and with other women and their families and it was so good and such an eye-opening read this book was a really different story than any I've ever heard and it was really impactful in watching these women figure that out and how to navigate life with this secret and how to avoid being imprisoned it was it was just it was really good I ended up giving it four stars I it took me a long time to get into and it's not a book that I would want to reread over and over and over again so that's why I didn't give it five stars but I do think this is a book that is incredibly important for people to read I feel like so often we hear about the queer experience in America and so hearing about it from a different country in the 1970s like that's insane like that was not that long ago so hearing hearing that story was really impactful and powerful and then I have read more into Mexican Gothic I don't have it with me but I think I'm about halfway through and I'm liking it more than when I started it. I think I had a hard time with the writing or the audiobook, but now that I've gotten used to it, I am enjoying it more. Nothing super spooky has happened yet and I've heard that the story gets really gross, so I haven't seen any of that yet. I really wish that I had brought one of my books to read with me so that I could read in the park because it's so gorgeous out. I mean, the park... My apartment's like literally right across the street, but I'm feeling very basic today. I did not get a pumpkin spice latte, but this is like perfect. I This is like white girl fall right here with my boots, my leggings, my flannel, and my Starbucks and a book. I'm embarrassed. Hi, it is Saturday. Saturday and I have not read a lot yesterday I filmed a bunch of videos and I'm filming a bunch of videos today as well the only thing that I have completed in the past 24 hours is saga volume 3 I rushed through this or I breezed through this this morning this one was my least favorite of the series so far I felt like there was the least amount of like character growth in a way and I don't know it just was like happened like things just kept happening and I didn't really feel anything for each of them and I feel like there were parts that were kind of rushed through a little bit so overall I gave it three stars it was I mean I still enjoyed reading it it was just not as like evocative as the other um what is the volumes in this series I I'm going to go now and get to reading because I am so far behind. But that is four books down, 13 to go. So I just finished Mexican Gothic. You're resting against it, otherwise I would hold it up. 
I hated it so much. I rated it two stars, but would consider rating it lower. I love gothic literature so much. I love atmospheric literature. I love being scared when you don't know what's happening. Like the atmosphere is oppressive. I love haunted houses. I love when you don't know if stuff is actually happening or not. I love all of that. And this book had that. Yes, it did. But it was, in my opinion, so poorly written. In my opinion. I have so many people love this book. So obviously, you know, do with my opinion what you will. It's just my opinion. I'm going to try to keep this spoiler free. So, Noemi is the main character. It's not that she's unlikable. It's just that she's unrealistic. Like, she goes to see her cousin. And the people in this house where her cousin's living are like, No, you can't see your cousin. And she's like, Okay. Like, you came all this way and you're not going to fight to see your cousin? Like... All right, I get there's not a lot I can say without without being spoilery, but I just thought her whole character was just like not consistent, and there were plot points that weren't consistent either. Like there were all of these rules in the house for what you can and can't do. One of them being smoking. The another being not talking at dinner we get a reason towards the end of the book why noemi's not allowed to smoke in the house but continue she continues smoking in the house and no one takes her cigarettes or lighter which i don't know why it bothered me so much but it's like they would have they would have taken that why wasn't that thought of and the other rule being you can't talk at dinner, which was never explained. There was no reason for it, really. And then whenever people in the house are trying to keep things secret, they talk in Spanish. You are telling me that these people have never learned Spanish. This family has been here for centuries. They've never learned Spanish. And the reveal, oh my god, the reveal, I can't believe I haven't even said anything about the reveal, is so silly to me I mean I get it like it's it's it was not the direction that I thought the book was gonna go in it was you know a unique story that I get why people like it but for me I was like this shit is dumb like this is not believable and I know like horror it doesn't doesn't have to be believable right but like just the way that the story was set up it's just like none of it really made sense and Noemi's actions didn't make sense with like who she was supposed to be and you get nothing of Mexican culture nothing at all the whole story takes place in an English family home where they don't even speak Spanish okay let me think for something I liked about the book I liked, there's a character in the book who you think you can trust, and I liked that, I mean, we find out in the end whether you can or you can't, but I like that there there was that question throughout the entire book. I did like that. I, that's what I'm talking about when we talk about gothic literature, like, you don't know which side you're going to fall on, and, you know, like that aspect of it I liked that I didn't even like this character I just liked that aspect of it maybe I'm being a butthole but no I'm not being a butthole I don't have to like every book and it's interesting because I also gave lock every door two stars but I enjoyed reading that more it was more of a page turner for me like I I would not want it have wanted to put that book down and not have finished it like I wanted to know the ending and in this I didn't care. 
So it's just interesting that in the realm of two star thrillers, I still had a very vastly different experience. And I think I just had way high of expectations too. I think I'm learning that having expectations do really matter for me when it comes to reading a book. And I need to come into books with more of a neutral mindset and not let other people's praise affect my... But it's like, how do you do that? How as a person do you do that? How do you not let other people influence you when you're asking for recommendations or seeking out videos for recommendations? I don't know. And I'm also finding that I just don't like a lot of new releases. I've been picking them up more because of book two because people that's what people are talking about but all of the new releases that I've liked or that I've read this year for the most part I haven't enjoyed and I don't think that's like of course there's going to be new releases that I love and whatever but I think that I am so picky which I also had never really realized oh well, I guess I kind of had I am so picky that I need to let books accumulate the test of time a little bit before putting them on my TBR because there's so many books in the world and I need to be choosy in what I read because there's so many books that I want to read and I can't just read every single new release that comes out. This has been very eye-opening and I'm definitely going to be changing my book habits but how boring is that for you guys to just see older books? We'll figure something out. I can't believe I had two two-star thrillers. Ugh. So I'm taking a break from reading today. And Brian and I are at the apple orchard. And we're going to go pick some apples. What kind are we getting? Did she say? Hi, we're going to have a little chit chat. So, a couple of thoughts that I had today. Chantelle and I were talking about doing a prize, doing a series where we talked about all of the women's, International Women's Prize for Fiction shortlist books. We, we wanted to talk about all six of them and then decide which one we thought would be the best choice you know whether we agreed or disagreed with the choice of the judges which has now been announced as Hamnet and so I gathered all of the books from the library but one quickly realized I cannot read that many emotional books in such a short amount of time and two totally not an original idea lots of people are doing the same concept I did not realize that of course people are doing that concept. It is not a difficult concept to think of. So I'm tabling that idea until potentially next year when I have more time to read the shortlist before the actual winner is announced and it'll actually be relevant because by the time I finish all of these books, it wouldn't be relevant anymore. So with that being said, I have three books from the library that I wanted to read within this vlog, but... Now, I am not going to stress out about them as much. I already returned Dominicana, and Dominicana by Angie Cruz is on script. So I do still want to read it, but I have already returned it to the library, and I'm not going to worry about it this month. Now I'm not on this time limit that I was setting for myself to have these all read to put out a video next month. So the other is Girl, Woman, Other by Bernadine Evaristo. This, I also have the audiobook on Audible, so I don't need to read it right this second. And then the third book that I have from the library that I was going to read for this series was Weather, a Novel by Jenny Ophel. And I'm actually like 50 pages and it's pretty easy to get through, so I think I will still be able to finish this, but I definitely won't be able to finish this before it's due back at the library. So my number 
of books that I wanted to read this month is going down two because I'm taking Dominicana and Grow and Other off. I mean, I'm still going to try to read this before it's due back, but I'm not going to stress myself out about it because I am so far behind. I am so far behind in my reading. So hopefully taking the stress off of those three books will let me give more attention to the other books for now that I have to read for the book Oblathon and my Shoots and Ladders TBR game over at Book Wild. So now that's man, I don't know why it's so hard for me to do math. So I'm taking off Dominicana and Girl Woman Other. So that's 15 books in the 18 days as opposed to 17 books. Maybe I'll just do two shorter books because I do need to read the saga books. Choices are hard. Hi. So I look like a disaster. Whatever. I finished this morning weather. It's... Tuesday. Tuesday. I finished Weather by Jenny Ophel. It was short. It was a quick read. I just feel very indifferent to having read it. I gave it three stars. I feel like I got more from the synopsis on the inside cover than I did from the actual book itself. It's about this librarian named Lizzie who starts answering letters for her old mentors like psychology or like end of the world podcast and she is supposed to respond with a note of hope keep in mind we don't get this from the book i got this from the inside jacket i feel like i'm just not smart enough for books like these like i just feel like my where my enjoyment of reading comes from is not from an intelligent place. I think it's a good book. I definitely see the merit of this. I think like there's a lot about the creeping dread of living in like our society today with Trump as president and climate change and I fully support all of that. I just wasn't connected to this book it didn't make me feel that dread it didn't make me feel really much of anything that is the one two three four five sixth book that i have finished i'm so far behind in this challenge for myself and i think i might split this up into two different vlogs because i realized how long this is gonna be it's gonna be so long so this is the last book that I'm going to talk about for the first part of the vlog. So far I have read 1,654 pages and I still have like 4,000 to read and I have nine days left. I'm taking off Dominicana and Girl, Woman, Other, but I'm going to add in their place three saga books that I have from the library. So I have 11 books left in nine days. That doesn't sound so bad, but when you have that The Way of Kings is one of them, and that's how far I am. Um, yeah, it's a, that's... Oh, man. Yeah, if you want to continue watching me struggle trying to finish 17 books in 18 days or whatever it is, check out the second part of this vlog. Thank you guys for hanging out. Uh, wish me luck. Bye.